Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk about the Restricted Management Administrative Unit Capability. Now we're used to the idea that we have our entry tenant, formerly our Azure AD tenant, and at that tenant level, so this is our tenant, we can assign certain users roles. So we have these roles that are set at the tenant level, so they are global. They're gonna impact every single user or device or group depending on the permissions that particular role has. Now there's gonna be scenarios where I have a particular group of users or group objects or devices that I want a different set of people to be able to manage, but only that smaller set. For example, maybe I have the idea that I have a certain branch office, for example, maybe it's a certain geography. And so what I can do is I can create an administrative unit. I put objects inside there. Let's say it's some users, maybe it's devices. And I can then assign a role at the administrative unit level. So then the people that have been assigned the role at the administrative unit well, they are allowed to perform that role for all the objects inside. But those global roles, they also still have the ability. So the people that can act within these objects are the roles assigned at the scope of the administrative unit, but it's also still those global roles. Now, potentially I have a scenario where I have certain maybe users or maybe specialized devices where I want to say this group of people can manage those objects, but I wanna restrict the global roles to not be able to act on them. Maybe I have some help desk administrators, for example, and I've got my C-level executives. I've got maybe a certain region where there are rules about who are allowed to manage those objects. Maybe it's a very sensitive group object that ha gives access to sensitive data, I wanna have a lot of controls on who can act on that. And so what we now have the ability to do is when we create the administrative unit, what I can specify is it's this restricted management administrative unit. And once again, I would put the objects inside. So let's say I put my in this case, maybe my executive users into this restricted administrative unit, and I set that restricted management flag at time of creation. And just like before, I now configure roles. So once again, I would go and configure particular roles, and both of these, remember, this role is at the scope of this administrative unit. So now what happens is, well, this role, whatever it is at this scope, the people who have that role, they have the ability to perform that role's capabilities, its operations on the objects inside. However, those global roles, let's say that global help desk administrator, does not. I have to have the role assigned specifically at the restricted management administrative unit the global roles do not have the permissions. So let's take a quick look at this. If we jump over, so if I go and I'm in the entry portal and it's the roles and admins, I'm looking at admin units. When I go and create my administrative unit, we have this restricted management administrative unit. And that's where if I set that to yes, it means the global roles will not have permission to it. It's only the people assigned roles at the administrative unit itself. So I have one here, as we can see, executive users, and I've set the restricted management to yes. So if I go and look at executive users, I've just got Bruce Wayne in there. Bruce Wayne is very concerned about other global admins or help desk admins, whoever messing. And then if I look at the roles, it's at this particular level, I can grant all of these different roles. And in this case, I've granted user administrator, just a John and uh, an admin account, a break glass account. 
but other people with a certain role would not have that. Now, just to demonstrate this, so remember, I have that permission. So if I go and look at all my users, and I was to go and look at Bruce Wayne, now it's warning me, hey, this user is a member of a restricted management administrative unit, rights are limited to particular administrators scoped on their AU, but because I am John and I'm one of those, well, I can go and edit the various properties. I have that permission to change certain attributes. However, if I was Clark Kent, and Clark is really the person Bruce is worried about messing with his account, so Clark is actually a global administrator. So Clark has elevated up, he's activated the global administrator role for a finite period of time. So even a global admin, if Clark is to go and look at the users, and I try and look at Bruce Wayne, it's actually grayed out. I do not have the ability to edit. So that's really the point of what this is doing. Now I do want to stress something. I'm showing it with a global administrator, Clark can't access. But realize um, a global administrator, realize that also things like the um, privileged uh, role administrator, they're super accounts within your entra tenant. And so while I couldn't edit as a global admin, realize I could go and add myself to that administrative unit. I could remove a user from it. Now those would all be auditable tasks, but if you've given someone one of those very highly privileged roles, that global admin, that privileged role administrator, they can work things out. But again, there would be a full audit that they've modified, they've changed something, they've added themselves. But outside of those two roles, if I was just a help desk admin at a global level or any other role, this is absolute. They would have no ability to impact anything within this restricted administrative unit. I have to have the role given specifically scoped at that AU. And the whole point is you should not have many people that are global admins or that privileged role administrator. They should be super, super locked down. Anyway, your most trusted uh, organizations, administrators. But every other role, hey, this is an absolute brick wall. And even if I have those special roles, there'll be a full audit of them doing things to manipulate and super elevate themselves to be able to interfere with those in some way. Um, it is a, a Microsoft Entra ID P1 feature to be an administrator in these roles, but the actual users, uh, they can just be free accounts. So it's super simple. I mean, this is really all it's doing, but it's geared towards, hey, I have some particular users or maybe um, devices that I need a heightened level of protection. I don't want those regular help desk admins or whatever it might be at the global level be able to interact with these objects. I want it really locked down. And I can see exactly what is blocked. If we look at the documentation, it shows the type of operations that are blocked. And it talks about, hey, modify any properties of the user group or device delete the user group or device, update the password, modify owners or members of the group. So it's gonna restrict all of those items. And it talks about, hey, who can do actions on it? Well, it's only if I'm scoped at that unit or the users in another administrative unit that's restricted. So remember, a, a user or an object can be in multiple administrative units. So if I'm in multiple administrative units, if someone is scoped as a role at any of those, they would have the permission to, to act on that object. So that's just the key thing to consider. But it's gonna really lock it down. Again, if I'm a global admin or that privileged role administrator, there are things I could do because I'm considered a super trusted entity in the organization, but there'd be a full audit log of it. Every other role, they're gonna be completely blocked from doing anything. I have to have the role set here. So that was it. Uh, I hope it was useful. Till next video, take care.